St Ives Town Council, Cornwall Council and the St Ives Business Improvement District, the BID, have issued an emergency safety plan to be able to cope with visitors between now and the end of September in the town, which involves closing parts of the town to traffic between the hours of 10am and 4pm. This has angered the people who live at St Nicholas Court, who have given us some very strong reactions to the suggestion first impression was the uh, the woolly language, the lack of clarity, and the what I would say unresolved issues. Um, so there's a few things I highlighted. Phrases like may need to be considered uh, or further measures may need to be considered and also there may be scope for, is being explored, need to address, explore solutions. I won't go through all of them because there are a lot but barriers and professional staff would be needed. Road signage would be needed, electronic signage, car parks converted, uh, operational systems could be changed. Um, and that is even before you get to the section that says exceptions and concessions. So a lot of things to be considered. And what, what that brought to mind was something that my dad said to me a few years ago about his dislike of Tolkien. And that was that whenever the protagonists find themselves in a tricky situation, that the author would write them out of a hole with some magic. And it's worth mentioning here that the eagles aren't coming to rescue us and that this proposal relies on so many things to go right that it is pure fantasy. The proposed road closure will start from Trigena Place and Gabriel Street Junction or Library Corner. Any vehicles entering the zone from Windsor Terrace, Bedford Road and Back Street would go around Market Square and leave the town via St Andrews Street. Chapel Street will also be closed to traffic to avoid rat running. Drillfield Lane will be made one way in a southward direction and there will be no right to turn into to get a place from Bedford Road. You also um, have a business here, don't you? So can you tell us how it feels as a business owner who's also resident in Danalong? Um, as a business owner and resident, I'm quite horrified. I really am horrified by what has been given the label a plan. Um, if this isn't a plan then there is no mention within this of how consultation is going to happen. There's no mention of consultation. The words in this document are final, approved, recommend that this is approved at a meeting before which we haven't been consulted. Um, and there are so many things in this document, it's just hard to know where to start. Um, I have started to highlight it and my reaction both as a resident and as a business is that I feel for other business owners in town um, I've run many businesses, I've been involved in a wide variety of businesses through my life. Uh, we've lived here for 20 years, but I've been involved in such a wide variety of business, planning, defence logistics, putting operational plans into practice in this country and around the world. And I can be honest, honest with you and say I've never seen something such, so full of holes as this document. We need the town to thrive. We all do, whether we are directly involved with businesses or whether we are part of the community that is St Ives and keeps the town running because we all need tourists to come here, we all need visitors to come here and we all need them to be safe and we need to be safe doing that. And this plan, which has no stated aim, and I think that is the problem with it, given there is no stated aim, they have decided that all our ills can be sorted by closing 200 metres of road with zero thought as to the consequences that's going to have. So it's going to strangle the town. It's not going to help us to get back on our feet and earn some money to pay the mounting bills. For three months we've been watching our bank balances tick away with no income. And now when we're trying to get out there and safely welcome visitors to town and help them to enjoy the facilities, maybe spend some money and keep us running, well, they're going to be not protected and neither are we. If you wanted to come up with a method of making sure we were all exposed to a fatal virus, I have to say, I would be hard pushed to find a better way to do it than what's been put in this plan. It, it's laughable if it wasn't so serious. It's sad. I really fear for the future of the St Ives, is this is what we're going to do. But the Mayor of St Ives, Tony Harris, says the plan does have a clear aim. It's about public safety. Um, we know that um, from the July the 4th, the town is likely to get very busy. Uh, the usual tourists will hopefully descend. Uh, a lot of the self-catering uh, accommodation will be open. Um, much of the uh, hospitality outlets will be open, depending on government advice. We don't know about the social distancing yet. But uh, bearing in mind, of course, that a lot of children will be off school until September. 
uh, a lot of holidays involving flights won't happen um, and a lot of people haven't taken their holidays yet so we expect the town to get very very busy and we all know what it's like it's almost like new year's eve in the peak of the summer and uh, that's going to be welcome to the businesses but we also have to be careful that we don't uh, encourage infection because obviously there's a big public health issue. That's the point of this plan. It's about the public health of our residents, of our shopkeepers and of course of the visitors. It's trying to minimise or actually reduce if we can um, the risk of infection. The St Ives Business Improvement District Manager Helen Tripconi told us more about how the plan came about. We were trying to make sure that the, the, the town remained safe for the visitors to come to but bearing in mind that the residents had to be happy with the plans we put in place to not bring any increased risk which we know that obviously people coming from outside the county may well do so, so, so social distancing was obviously key um, so it was a sit down then and, and with a number of people and discuss whether or not traffic was a problem, how wide the streets were, what sort of signage was required, how much information and comms should be fed out to people. Um, and then we've sort of moved on a stage from there where the emergency plan has been put together by Cornwall Council, Town Council and the bid have had an input into that as well. Back in St Nicholas Court, more residents expressed their views. I'm concerned about the delivery situation because we do rely on deliveries at the moment. A little bit concerned that they might not be able to get through. Actually closing the wharf for us is, is quite traumatic to say the least. We do sometimes need to have some sort of communication with the outside world and the wharf is our communication. One of the measures that they're considering is to offer an, an offloading point at the Guildhall. Would that not satisfy you? Absolutely not, to the contrary, because we've then been forced to walk through the town. Well, how would it interrupt your particular way of life? <laughs> well, at the moment, all our, all our lives are interrupted, so we're not having a normal life, but we were hoping that over the summer we would be able to have a normal life and we would be able to go and do things that we hadn't been able to do previously. We don't know if that's going to be the case or not. I think all these erosions of our ability to lead our lives is really comes back down to about what I think I speak for myself, but probably for all of us, that we feel very concerned about our personal liberties and our vehicle access. But the council would say uh, that actually their main aim is safety and that us as residents will have to sacrifice and uh, you know in order to to make sure that everyone who's visiting the town is safe what, what's your reaction to that i don't i think that's completely back to front thinking i don't think it will make it safe by having cars going through i think it naturally creates a two meter divide we know that people are going to be uh, inconvenienced we know that people are going to be uh, upset, we understand that, and that's why we're, we're at a consultation stage at the moment. We just released a, you know, a draft plan where we put it out to people, and we're just going to have to have a think about how we we can best deliver our objective about public safety and and, and re minimising the inconvenience to, to to businesses to people of the town, people who live. And, and, and people who've got cars on the west side of, 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 the, of the traffic zone, if you like, the no traffic zone, uh, we, they could just write into the Guildhall and they'll be given, and they, they'll, they'll need to give their proof of address, and that'll be written on a, on a, on a pass, they'll display the pass on the windscreen, and they'll be able to you know, access their properties during all of those times. It's taken 48 hours of us pointing out to our elected representatives, all they have to look at is the electoral roll to work out where we are. Is that so hard? And was that something that the writers of this document couldn't have thought of in the first place? Um, so it's not only dismissive, it's patently showing their lack of ability to, to even guess some simple steps to address the issues of residents before they put it in front of us and show that we're second class citizens in this town and an afterthought. Overall, perhaps as residents giving some concession to the council by saying yes, pedestrianising the 4th Street is probably a good idea. You know, 
but not the wharf. John Wilson is the chairman of the St Ives Harbour Users Group. He says he was very disappointed when he read the plan. We've had a group here that's worked really hard over the last two years to establish a really inclusive working parties, if you like, uh, to how we'll manage the harbour and how we'll make things better for this town. To receive no consultation at all was disappointing in the least. And so what would you actually be asking for now that it seems that the, um, the architects of the plan are actually responding to people? What, what is it that you want? I mean, personally, I'd like to see some of the elements of the Code of Conduct that we agreed put in place. Um, there's a lot in the Code of Conduct that we, we immediately know what we're going to do. We can, each individual business was working on its risk assessments, and that's quite right and proper to keep people safe. They should be responsible enough to make the social distancing and the cleaning of things work. It's not an easy job, and I, I know that it's not an easy job for the boatmen, but to take everybody off um, the, the streets and to put them on a West Pier with everybody else, the hair braiders, the tattoo artists, if anybody can tell me how that's a good plan for anyone, I just can't see it. On West Pier, we spoke to Michael Hancock from St Ives Boats. Well, normally there'd be, just behind us here, there'd be a, a number of sellers selling boat trips. Um, now, obviously, we've got huge frustrations um, with the current climate. Um, we don't know really what way we can operate, whether we've got capacity limits on boats or we're waiting for government guidance. Uh, it's going to make it more difficult for us to sell tickets as well, maybe even impossible to sell tickets. Um, it, it's going to have a, a, an incredible impact. Um, we do need some visibility on the street, you know, the, the probably 12 or 14 businesses that are operating boats here through the summer is a huge part of the town, a uh, huge part of the economy and it's also a big draw for people, people come into town to take the trips. Um, so we want a fair system, um, we, you know, we, we are prepared and most of us as we've talked about with the code of conduct are prepared to limit the amount of ticket sellers, limit the amount of signage. Um, so we just, we just want to compromise and we want to be able to have a discussion, not just be told you can't do this. I think deliveries is a real problem and, and to be honest with you there are a huge amount of deliveries. It's not only deliveries, it's holiday homes who are bringing down quite heavy loads of linen and things like that. It's going to be very difficult for them and to be honest the, the sort of manual handling and are people going to be expected to carry great loads for a four bedroomed house? I don't think that's very fair. Um, I'm not quite sure what the solution is but I do understand that it's not fair on those people and they're, they're not going to like that. It's my role obviously is to look after the businesses of the town, that's, that's my job as the bid manager. So I've now been out to the businesses, I'm conscious that it's fairly short notice, but I've asked for them to feed back to me their feelings on different aspects of the plan, the pedestrianisation, the car free zone, one way systems, um, central dropping points for deliveries. Um, exclusive passes or whatever you're going to call them, permits to work the system. So um, slowly but surely people are coming back to me either on the phone or by email and now I'm putting together a report for the Town Council which will basically give them my belief of how the businesses that have, have actually engaged with me are feeling about the different aspects of the plan. I'm saying to people go and speak to your delivery firms, whether it's the big delivery firms, whether it's individual firms that you're dealing with, food stuff etc. Um, and see whether or not they're all, everybody's working to different um, guidelines these days because of the situation we all find ourselves in and we're not in a normal situation so I think a lot of firms will be more flexible and realising that they have got a certain time in the morning and a certain time later on to come into the town um, we we'll also have looked at having a drop-off point, a central drop-off point at the Guildhall. All the agencies have gone for nine o'clock in the morning checkouts now and six and seven o'clock check-ins so they've extended that to give their cleaners more time and how do you feel that um, the rest of the harbour has been impacted? I mean, obviously, you know, the, the main thing here well, when, on West Pier is the lifeboat. Um, well, the backing up of traffic, if, if um, people are trying to come into town, maybe they don't know that the town's closed off, um, is going to back, back traffic up, especially on, on the busier times, handover days, Friday, Saturdays. Um, I can imagine it being pretty much impossible to get a vehicle into town. Um, and many of the lifeboat crew need vehicles to get down into town, so there's an obvious impact there, which for emergency services is, is a huge problem. It's going to have to be a lot of dispensations. Uh, so we expect, you know, emergency vehicles will go through. Um, we expect deliveries to be able to go outside of those times. Um, we expect, uh, you know, vulnerable people, carers, you know, dispensations for that. Voluntary networks in the town have actually supported those people. We want that to continue. We want to support that ourselves. So that's quite important. That's very important. We can assure people that, you know, that is a key part of the plan to protect, the, you know, the caring support that they get. 
lifeboats, the fishermen to get to their place of work because, the, you know, they can't live by 10 to 4, they have to, you know, abide by tidal times. As regards to car parks, it's being proposed a sloop car park is converted to a long stay. Smeaton's car park should remain open as normal but only access before 10am. Porth Gwydden and Wheel Dream car parks are permit only. It will be necessary, says the document, to contact residents who have a permit to inform them of the vehicle free zone rules. And the document urges Cornwall Council to explore how quickly operational systems could be changed to convert the island longstay car park into a pre-booking, pre-payment car park. The Cornwall councillors are thinking about what they can do about, you know, the car parks beyond, if you like, the traffic zone. It's an issue there. Um, and, uh, you know, and something will have to be worked out. We understand that. But at the same time, we have to have regard that we, if there are, you know, if almost everybody has got a dispensation, then, you know, the thing won't work because there won't be a traffic management plan, if you like. But the, the residents here are of the utmost importance. If the residents aren't happy, the visitor experience will not be a good one. So we all work together. Absolutely. Well, I get the, the whole idea about, I mean, we've, we've had this unprecedented crisis in our times and we have to do something. Um, whether people will actually adhere to the plan, I, I just quite honestly can't see it happening. Um, I don't think people are going to socially distance uh, the way that it's laid out, whether there's traffic or not, because they're not doing that now. So I don't think that's going to work. Um, no, I don't think it's going to work.